Hello and welcome to the special edition where we turn our focus on China, its growing role in the world economy and the government's large-scale measures to rein in inflation, property prices and to address the huge glut in liquidity. And for this special episode, we have with us Mr. Montgomery Ho, the MD and Head of uh, Commercial Banking at HSBC in China. Mr. Montgomery Ho, welcome to this show. You have been leading a delegation of Chinese businessmen as we believe to yeah. India. What is the purpose and what kind of opportunities are you picking up over here? Well, we all know that um, India and China economies are the, are the biggest one in Asia. And um, with a population of uh, one third of the world's population, I think uh, these two markets are just too important for, for both each other as well as to the world. And uh, recently we see a lot of increase in the, in the bilateral trade between India and China. And we reckon that um, there will be 40% increase in this year compared to last year in terms of trade flow between these two countries. And uh, we would like to bring the delegate over to, to India to check it out here, what's the business opportunity and how can we do more business with each other. Any particular sectors that you're targeting over here? Any, uh, like, would, would it be financial services or would it be education or computer services? Any um, particular sectors that you have in mind over here? Uh, from our delegates, um, some of them will, will be on the wind power, some of them will be in the solar energy, and uh, one of the customers is from the steel industry, and some of these are from the consumer, some consumer goods. So it is a wide spectrum, and I uh, understand that uh, India is putting money into the infrastructure, power plant, the building, and so um, that is the reason why I think our, our customer are going to benefit from this delegate. So uh, if you could name some of these delegate companies uh, that are representing themselves over here in India right now along with you. Um, I prefer to, <laughs> to, to keep it anonymous, but uh, these are the listed companies, some of them listed in Hong Kong and some of them listed in China, and they are the leaders in their respective industry. So they are looking at uh, just uh, joint ventures or they are actively looking at picking up stakes in Indian companies, especially where you mentioned wind power. We all mm -hmm. know that that is one of the... Uh, sunrise sectors, so to speak, where there is a lot of potential. So are there uh, any talks on the anvil? What kind of mood do you sense from these uh, talks? Um, I feel that uh, they will be interested to invest in, um, in India, but uh, in what specific form? It is still up, up to them to discuss with their, um, their India counterpart. But uh, definitely, they are interested in this market. All right, now I'll move back to China a bit. Since you are on the ground over there, you have a feel and a sense of what exactly is happening. Mm. Why don't you take us through how this uh, entire slowdown that the government is trying to perpetrate in the Chinese market, is that really panning out as the government wants it to? As in, is this headed for a slow and a soft landing or is it headed for a hard landing? Um, we cannot say that it is, a, it is a dramatic slowdown in the Chinese market because uh, our house view is that the GDP for next year will be around 8%, uh, something like that, which is the normal rate uh, in the previous years. And uh, right now, the Chinese government is facing a, 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 a few challenging issues. One is the property price, the other is the uh, uh, excessive liquidity, and the third one will be the inflation pressure. And now the government is taking action to address these uh, challenges. And for example, in terms of the excess liquidity, they are putting up the reserve requirement ratio, and we expected that there will be another 200 basis point to 250 basis point uh, increase in terms of the reserve requirement uh, ratio. I think all these measures um, working to make sure that the financial stability in China will be there and the economic growth will be on a sustainable footing. I think it's a positive development. Okay, we'll come back to the liquidity and the inflation points in just a bit, but I want to pick your brains on the property uh, front in China. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's an asset price bubble happening over there in the well, property um, market? I'm not in position to comment about the specific property price, but um, from, from us, from our viewpoint... From uh, an anecdotal point of view that you're picking up from your clients or con mm -hmm. other con customers. Yeah, I think um, the, the situation is that uh, the property price has, 
has stabilized in the profit, uh, previous few months, and um, there will be strong demand for, for it in the, in the longer term. But uh, of course, the government would not like to see the price go up very drastically, and I th we are supportive of the government's measure that um, the property price should be kept at a stable level. You think they have bottomed out for now? Um, it's only the I do not have the crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, point taken. But uh, tell me something: Is this growth, the price, uh, the price rise, and the concerns that the government has, mm -hmm. is largely it's on the coastal cities which have seen a lot of boom in, over the last several years, mm -hmm. and Beijing and a few other big cities. Mm -hmm. Is this entire growth story uh, 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 the same across the rest of China, especially the interior and the western parts? I think the uh, Chinese government has always adopted a policy that um, uh, some area will have the, um, the advantage to develop at a faster pace. And that is the strategy of the uh, Chinese government to try to uh, filter the benefit of, uh, of growth to the other provinces inland. And uh, the recent measures, say for example, encouraging the enterprises to move from the Pearl River Delta or the Yangtze River Delta into inland province is a conscious action from the government in order to bring the, uh, the fruit of the development in the past few years to those uh, citizens living in the inland provinces. I think it's a, a, a good move of the government. But on the other hand, do you think then that uh, the increased focus on the inland provinces will raise some kind of a price rise uh, uh, kind of situation over there in the near future? If we're talking about the, the present inflation pressure, uh, I think it's more due to the supply side, the bottleneck in the supply side. And uh, the government is taking action to, to um, improve the, the flow of goods into the market and make sure that the supply of food is stable. And uh, they're going to, to help addressing the inflationary pressure uh, um, in the near term. And uh, by moving the, the, the industry or some of the manufacturing setup into inland of China, I don't think it will going to impact the, the, the inflation uh, in any way because uh, we still have abundant of lab labor supply in these uh, inland provinces. And uh, also the infrastructure over there has been improving all the time. So by moving this uh, factory into the inner part of our provinces, will not to have a significant cost impact on the manufacturing uh, cost involved. So overall you see manufacturing activity also picking up because a couple of months earlier, in fact the HSBC PMI index for China showed a dip for a couple of months. In fact, it fell below that 50, crucial 50 mark for just a bit mm. in one of the uh, recent readings. So you think that manufacturing activity bottomed out over there and from here on it's back again to what China is used to seeing normally? I, I think the manufacturing sector is, um, is recovering from the financial tsunami um, in, uh, in the last year. And uh, after one year's adjustment, either they have um, trimmed down the operation or they have think about a way to, to address the, the situation uh, after the tsunami. And so the, the footing is more firm in, in, in China regarding the manufacturing uh, activity. And also Chinese government uh, trying to push up the domestic consumption demand. And so the, for the manufacturing side, they have another avenue. Rather than just selling to the Western world, they have the domestic market to develop. So they are kind of uh, balancing their, their, their stake. Thank you.